the fiqh proceeds hadith. The fiqh is sunnah. Sunnah proceeds hadith. That is Mufti Abu Layth. And that's just a short clip of a longer clip that I'm about to play. And then after the longer clip, I have a question. So what I'm going to do now is play the longer clip. And I'm going to start the longer clip where Mufti Abu Layth in the original video is talking about Islam before Bukhari, before Dawood, before the collection of Hadith and how he ties it all together. And you'll see that in the longer clip. So without further ado, here's Mufti Abu Layth. Then you have an, a discussion on epistemology. How is it that you think people learnt Islam? You think they learnt Islam from Sahih Bukhari, from Abu Dawood, who come 250 years after the Prophet? They learnt Islam through the living tradition. Fiqh precedes the documentation of fiqh. The living sunnah, the living tradition precedes the documentation and the efforts of the Muhaddithin. The Muhaddithin project doesn't come into effect until centuries after Islam. Fiqh was already documented. Imam Malik in his time, his mudawwana alone has over 30,000 fatawa documented. In his time, Abu Hanifa's Zahir or Riwayah has 100,000 Masail documented. The fiqh proceeds hadith. The fiqh is sunnah. Sunnah proceeds hadith. I understand this, those scholars who do not make that distinction between hadith and sunnah. But then you need to, one needs to highlight this in a discussion. One needs to say that, look, there are those ulama who draw this distinction because they are the early ulama of Islam. Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa. That is the Maliki madhab and the Hanafi madhab combined is probably what? 70% of all Sunni Islam today on the world, on the globe. That's the, the Maliki madhab and the, the Hanafi madhab and the Maliki madhab is like three quarters almost of entire Sunni, at least you're talking, it is between two thirds to three quarters of entire Sunni Islam on the globe today. <laughs> That's not like a small, but that is a huge proportion, it is the overwhelming majority of Sunni Islam on the globe today. So if you're looking at most of Asia, Central Asia and all that part of the globe, you can see behind me all the Central Asia and all those populated countries are Hanafi in fiqh. And if you're looking at Maliki, most of uh, Islam in Africa is Maliki. And then you've just got the Middle East and there you've got some Hanafi like Iraq and you've got some Shafi'i, but still Iraq would still probably be, you know, plentiful Hanafi madhab. And then you've just got Jordan, Syria, and these small countries, and you're going to have some Shafi'i. In Egypt, you'll have a mixture of Shafi'i, probably predominantly in Egypt, but then you'll still have Hanafi, you'll have Maliki in lower Egypt. Uh, you know, you, you, you're going, uh, sorry, in the Sa'id and those places. So it's still looking at the majority of the entire Muslim world. This is how they understand Islam, that they understand Hadith and Sunnah not to be the same. But whether they know it or not, but their books teach this. So it's a big thing. You know, these things cannot be just, oh, it's not important. It's very important. Now the question, explain what Mufti Abu Layth just explained. Now that doesn't mean explain how Mufti Abu Layth is wrong, and that doesn't mean explain how Mufti Abu Layth is right. It just simply means explain what Mufti Abu Layth just explained. Swim. 